In this demonstration we're going to look at toolpath templates, a new feature of Aspire 3. Uh, toolpath templates are a really great way of speeding up dramatically uh, the process of reusing common strategies and common tool settings across different um, designs. So I'm going to start by creating a toolpath template and I'm going to do it based on this uh, simple layout which is taken from the Aspire samples. So we have the central motif of the bull's head which we want to v-bit carve and then I have a simple boundary which we're going to use a profiling pass with an OG tool uh, to cut out the sign. So we'll start with the usual uh, process of creating our toolpaths. So I'm going to select the bull's head first. You'll notice it was a different colour and the reason it's a different colour is if I pop across the drawing tab and open up the uh, tool, the layer control dialog, we'll see that the artwork has already been laid up onto two layers. We've got the V-bit carving layer, which is the purple stuff, our bull's head logo, and a cutout, which is the green stuff, which is our boundary. And that will become important, uh, you'll see, as the demonstration carries on. So let's have a look at this stuff. So there's my selection, and I'm going to go in and just show you how we would normally do this. So we would normally select the stuff we want to machine, create our V-bit carving toolpath here. And essentially, there's a new area at the bottom here in Aspire, which is telling me that my vector selection in this case was manual. I chose the things directly myself, uh, and that's what we're going to machine. But for the purposes of a template, I don't want to do that. I'm going to have Aspire make the selection for me based on some criteria. So if I choose the selector button here, the new Aspire Vector selector pops up. And this says uh, that I can filter, starting from the uh, top of the form to the bottom, uh, all sorts of different things out of my current document. So what I'm going to say is that I want both open and close vectors, uh, but I only want them on uh, a selected layer, and that layer is the one that I'm calling vCarve. So I'm only going to select uh, open and close vectors on the vCarve layer. I'm also going to check this associate with toolpath box at the bottom here before I close it. And when I click OK here or close, now it tells me that this toolpath has got automatic vector selection. And that's going to be really useful. So we're going to call this toolpath vCarve design and calculate it. You'll notice that it's automatically selected the right parts of my design based on the layer that the vectors were on. Close that down and I'm going to do the a similar process now for the boundary. So rather than selecting the boundary myself, I'm going to create a profile tool uh, with some standard OG settings here. And again, I'm going to come down and use the selector, open and close vectors. In this case, it doesn't really matter because they're going to be closed, but we'll assume that there might be some open vectors on there, but only on the selected layer cutout. So the only the things on the cutout layer, and as you can see here, that currently is just this boundary. Associate it with the toolpath and close. Uh, if I don't associate it with the toolpath, it just allows me to make a one-off selection. But in this case, uh, we're going to create a template from these toolpaths, so I want the association to occur. And we'll just call this profile with OG. Calculate that. It's found the uh, boundary for me. And if I preview all of my toolpaths now, we can see that this is pretty much the uh, design that I want. Let's just uh, do that and finish off. Um, so that's pretty useful, uh, but at the moment it's not really achieved anything that I couldn't have done manually. So let's show the first thing that it achieves, which is quite handy, is if I come back into my drawing now, uh, close that down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw away this boundary. Um, I want to make sure that I'm on the right layer, so I'm on the cutout layer. So let's delete that. So effectively, um, the boundary that my original profile toolpath was on is now gone. And instead, I'm going to drop a completely different boundary on here. So I'm going to just create a uh, oval edge to my design as well. Let's just scale it up just a wee bit. Uh, so I'm just holding down the shift key here to scale it from the center. OK, so I'm going to put a, an, an oval boundary. It's gone green because I'm working on the cutout layer. OK, so just to recap there, I've deleted one piece of geometry which the toolpath had previously used, and I've replaced it with a completely new bit of geometry that just happens to be on the same layer. When I cut back to the toolpaths tab now, all I'm going to do, I'm not going to do anything in the toolpath, I'm just going to ask it to recalculate all the existing toolpaths. OK, and it says it's done that OK, and you'll notice rather importantly that it's picked up my completely new vector 
uh, and re effectively replace the profiling pass with the new pass. And if we go back to our preview, reset, preview them all again, and delete the waste material, you can see that I've now replaced the rectangular boundary with an oval one. But crucially, I didn't have to do any modifications to the toolpath at all. It simply picked up the existing uh, or whatever it found on the cutout layer, which had, had been changed since the toolpath had been created. So that's the first cool thing. Uh, once you've associated a uh, vector selection, an automatic vector selection with the toolpath, but it gets even better than that. So if we now um, select these uh, two toolpaths here, now at the moment obviously they're toolpaths that are fixed with this artwork, but we can use the new option here to save our toolpaths as a template. Uh, so with those, uh, both those toolpaths visible, I'm going to select that and I'm going to just uh, overwrite this existing file, but it's called vCarve with Profile Toolpath Template and we're just going to save that in our folder. And I'm going to close this model down completely now and open a new model. So essentially this model has got very little to do with the first one. It's completely different artwork uh, than the first file. If I have a look at the vector layouts, we can see that the layers, though, do still have the same naming convention. So we still do have uh, the central artwork on a layer called view carve and we have the cutout boundary on a layer called cutout. So that's important. And when I come across now to my toolpaths tab, I'm going to use the load toolpath template command, load in the template we created earlier, vcarve and profile. Remember, they're going to look for layer names now. If I open one up, we can just check. It's going to automatically find its associated vectors, which it's done already there. But essentially, I can just now have loaded in my template, just recalculate all toolpaths, Cut across to the preview, preview my toolpath, delete the waste material. And there you can see we've taken a completely new design uh, and with a template that we'd previously created, we could immediately uh, reproduce the same strategies on the new design. And that's really the power of the toolpath templates in Aspire 3.